האם זה באמת סגולה בדוקה? הסגולה ללמוד בזה? ערב טוב וגוד איבנינג, אנחנו נמצאים בזרע שמשון על פרשס דבורים. זה אוס היי, סקשן נאמר 5. לפני שאנחנו נראה את זרע שמשון, אנחנו 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 נראה את זרע שמשון. And uh, this is in reference to the Chet HaMeraglim, uh, one of the very early issues that Moshe uh, discusses with B'nai Yisrael in Parshas Devorim is the Chet HaMeraglim. So, uh, so Moshe says, uh, this is Perak Aleph, Sukim Lamed Dalet and Lamed He. Moshe Rabbeinu says, Vayishma Hashem es kol divreichem, and Hashem heard the sound of your words, Vayiktsof, and he became angry. Vayishov ale more, and he took an oath, saying, Im yire ish ba'anoshim ha'ele, if any of these people will see, hador haro hazeh, of this evil generation, eis ha'aret ha'tova, the good land, asher nishbati lo'asei slavoseichem, that I swore to give to your fathers. So it means that uh, what Moshe Rabbeinu is referring to is that when Hashem heard B'nai Yisrael moaning and crying and uh, complaining and saying, we're not going to be able to go conquer Eretz Yisrael, we're not going to be able to go into the land after the Meraglim, after the spies made their report. So Moshe said, when Hashem heard the sound of your words, uh, he took an oath saying that none of you would be allowed to go into uh, Eretz Yisrael. And only the children, when they had grown up after the 40-year sojourn in the Midbar, uh, they would be able to go in, uh, but, not, uh, but not, the, uh, not, not the Am, not the whole nation that was alive at that time. So the Zerah Shimshon begins, Os He, on Parshas Devar. Vayishma Hashem es kol divreichem, vayiktsof. And Hashem heard the sound of your words, and he became angry. Koshe, this is difficult. Lama lo Omar vayishma Hashem es divreichem. Why did the pasuk not say that Hashem heard your words? Demahu kol, because what is the meaning? Why did the Torah insert the word kol, which means voice or sound? Why didn't it say simply and more directly and, and seemingly very accurately, Hashem heard your words? Why did the Pasuk say, Hashem heard the sound of your words? And that question is the uh, fundamental and central question of this entire piece, the meaning and the purpose of the word kol, sound of the voice. And we find this same language of kol in the next parsha, the parsha of Vaeschanon. Shtei pa'amim b'pasuk echad. We find it two times in one Pasuk, and the Zer Shimshon now quotes the Pasuk. And uh, this is referring to uh, the uh, experience at Har Sinai when B'nai Yisrael heard Hashem uh, speak. They became uh, frightened and said to Moshe Rabbeinu, stop, stop, we, we can't listen to this. Have Hashem speak to you. And, uh, and then you'll repeat everything to us. And so that's what's being referred to right now. So this is Moshe talking. Vayishma Hashem es kol divreichem. And Hashem heard the sound of your voices. Bidaberchem elai. When you spoke to me. Vuchule, etc. And then in con concluding that same pasuk, Shamati es kol divrei ha'am hazeh. Hashem says, uh, Moshe quotes Hashem is saying, I have heard the sound of the words of this nation. So we see that, again, this usage, this insertion of the word kol, the sound of the words, as opposed to just saying Hashem heard the words of the people. So that's uh, the Zer Shimshon's second example. And now here comes a third example of the use of the word kol when we would think it would not be necessary. And we find the use of the word kol two times in Sefer Eov. And now the, and he quotes the uh, psukim. V'kol milin eshma. And the sound of the words I heard. And then another apasuk. Ha'azina l'kol miloi. 
listen to the sound of my words. And let me just explain what's happening over there. In Eov, of course, the uh, uh, terrible, terrible punishments, horrific punishments are, are brought upon uh, Eov. And um, he tries to maintain his faith in Hashem throughout, but ultimately he, he, uh, he breaks and he uh, starts uh, saying that what Hashem has done is not just. And, uh, and his friends, three friends come to comfort him and also to try and, and uh, give him chizuk, give him spiritual support. And then he, he doesn't accept it. And then uh, in uh, Sefer Eov, another person uh, comes named Elihu. And Elihu is the one who says the words that we're seeing. He first says, eshma, the sound of words I have heard. And then he says to Eov, listen to the sound of my words. Tam, the Zer Shimshon says, we need an understanding, we need an explanation. Mahu tevas kol. What is the function of this word sound in these psukim? So again, just to be clear before we continue, the Zer Shimshon has three examples of the word kol, sound being used con in connection with divrechem, with words, the sound of the words. And in each case, he's asking, why not just say the words as opposed to the sound of the words? And let's keep our examples, uh, our three uh, sources, our examples in mind. The first one is right from our Pasuk in Devarim, referring to the Chet Hamaragam. And Moshe says that Hashem heard the sound of the words of the people uh, when, they, when they moaned and, and uh, complained uh, about, about what they perceived as their lost chance to go into Eretz Yisrael, about their inability to conquer the land. And then the second example is in, comes from Parshas Vayeschanan when Moshe is relating uh, the Jewish people's experience at Har Sinai and B'nai Yisrael said uh, that they would prefer, greatly prefer for Moshe to hear the words, remaining words from Hashem as opposed to listening to them themselves. And Moshe said, Hashem heard the sound of your words. Uh, and then again in Eov, when uh, Elihu, a person who was listening to all of the uh, discourse between Eov and his three uh, friends, and he then stood up and said, I have heard the sound of these words, and now listen to the sound of my words. So in all of these three cases, the Zer Shimshon is posing his fundamental question about the use and meaning and function of the word kol. Now, before he answers that, in the next paragraph, he's going to dispense with some other places where the word coal, where the word sound is used, because as we'll see, he says these, those cases are not relevant. And let's take a look at that. And what we find also in Parshas Vaischanon, Kol Devorim Atem Shomim. This is Moshe referring to the fact that when B'nai Yisrael was at Har Sinai, they only heard the sound of words coming from Hashem. They did not see an image of Hashem. They saw no physical form, no image at all of Hashem. So that Pusik also uses this, the expression of kol divarim, the sound of the words. Zelo kasha velomidi. This is no, not a question and not a, an issue at all. Mishum demairi bedibor hakodesh barchu. Because there it's talking about the words, the speaking of Hashem. Ve'amrin and bemedrashir hashirim rabba. And we say in the Medrash Rabbo on Shir Hashirim, Shehadi Bor Shehayyote Mi Pi Hakodesh Baruch Hu, that the speech that came out of the mouth of Hakodesh Baruch Hu at Har Sinai, Hayoholech V'Chozer Al Kol Echad Mi Yisrael, it went and it uh, it went and returned from each from each and to each of the members of Bnei Yisrael, V'Omer Lo. And the words that, that Hashem uttered said, in, spoke to each person and said, will you accept uh, me upon you? Meaning, will you accept the words that Hashem spoke? And, and each person had to agree to accept the words before, the, before they could hear the words. And so the Zer Shimshon says, so you see that that was obviously an extremely unique situation when Hashem is the one talking and it's Hashem's words, then to, to refer to the words as kol, the sound of the words makes perfect sense because Hashem 
uh, Hashem's words had a whole separate kind of uh, dynamic where the words uh, sent a message to people asking them to be received before they could hear the words. The ode, in addition to that specific point, Dibor Elyon Shiny, the words of Hashem are just different in a, in a very fundamental way. Dixiv Bey, as the Pusik says regarding the, the uh, experience at Har Sinai, the Chol Ha'om Roim Esakolos, all of the people saw the sounds. So at Har Sinai, uh, we see that everything was different and unique. Uh, and and the and and Bnei Yisrael could even see visually the sounds that they heard, which of course is a supernatural event. And so the Zer Shimshon says we don't need to deal with that pasuk where it uses the sound of the words because that's a very special and unique situation. The Alder Echze Yiturat pasuk Shel Daniel, and along these same lines, we can answer. Uh, a pasuk in Daniel, which says, "The Eshma is called Devarav." Daniel says, "And I heard the sound of his words." And the Zer Shimshon says, We're, "We also do not need to be bothered with that pasuk." Shesham hayahamalech medaber, because there a malach was speaking to Daniel, and therefore, just as the just as the uh, voice of Hashem is unique and 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 special. And we understand that kol divarim, the sound of the words of Hashem, is appropriate. So too, when a malach speaks to a person, that is fundamentally different and unique and separate from when people speak. Uh, and therefore, you can say kol, the sound of the voice. And we understand that that's talking about something different. That is also a type of dibor elyon, a type of heavenly, uh, uh, heavenly words and heavenly uh, speech. But when regular Jews, when B'nai Yisrael is talking, and the reference is used to the sound of their words, kasha, then our question applies. So let's move ahead. So the Zerah Shimshon, now that he's dispensed with those psukim, which he says we don't have to worry about, because they refer to Hashem speaking or Amalek speaking, now we'll get, he'll, he returns to his question. And we can say, over there, if we look and say for Eov uh, nearby the Psukim that we already quoted, in other words, in the episode where Elihu is coming and speaking and addressing Eov, it's written, uh, these words are spoken by Elihu, and he says, I am full of words. And the spirit of my insides is distressed, meaning he's so full of words that he's and he's holding them back. It's so hard for him to hold them back that he's feeling internal distress and di internal discomfort because he has held himself back and hasn't uh, let let flow the words that he wants to say to Eo and to the three friends of Eo. Klomar, this means to say, la adam ezo siba. When a person has a certain reason to speak and to say a certain thing, perhaps it's because of anger, tirda or distress, sino or hatred, va'ava or love, or similar types of strong emotional feeling. When a person has things that they want to say coming from a very powerful emotional uh, source, such a person is often not able to hold back his soul, the limshol berucho, and to take power over his spirit, to prevent himself from saying what he needs to say, what he feels like he must say. It's very hard to hold yourself back when you have powerful emotions uh, driving you to say the words that you want to say. And such a person can be said to need to speak as if against his will. Bal korcho. He has to say these things almost against his will. He must get out these words. And when a person does speak based on these kinds of powerful emotions, these reasons, 
uchayotze and similar ones, ein ro'oy lasum lev ledevarim shelo. It is not appropriate to pay attention to his word, shehem below das, because they are being said without logic, without reason. Raksha osa hasiba machrachas osa ledaber. They're only being said because the powerful emotional force and source is forcing and compelling the person to speak. So the Zerashimshon is saying, from the story in Eov and from the words of Elihu, we see an idea that has wide applications. And that idea is just as Elihu said, these words are inside of me and I can't hold them back. It's causing me distress, internal distress and pain that I can't, I haven't been able to say what I want to say. So too, we see that that uh, kind of uh, situation can happen in other cases. And when a person speaks based on these powerful emotional drives, we should always keep in mind that what they're, what they're saying is not based on logic and reason and, and, and doesn't represent how they, actually, how, they, how they actually would feel or express themselves in a calm moment and in a composed moment. So now he continues with that idea. And therefore, Elihu, after Elihu introduced his words by saying, I'm full of words that are, so to speak, bursting out of me, etc. He wanted to make known to Eov, even though I feel compelled to speak to you, Im call ze with this being true, with all that being true, ha'azino l'kol miloi. Still, you should listen to the sound of my words. Ve'im ha'ya omer ha'azino l'miloi. And if Elihu had said, "Listen to my words," pshita she'iyov lo ha'ya meishis libo. It is obvious that Eov would not have paid attention uh, in his speaking. Because his words, Elihu himself admitted and expressed the fact that his words were coming because of great distress. The ain luscious lave alehem, and therefore no attention should be should be a paid uh, paid to his words. Umishum hachi amar, and therefore Elihu said, Le kol miloi, listen to the sound of my words. Klomar, that means to say, Eno midaber betirda uvalidas. Elihu said, Eov, if you listen to those sounds of how I'm talking, you'll see that my words are not being said in a distressed or angry or emotional way. Ubali das and without logic and, and, and reason. Rock only benefesh tsulula uvedas miyusheves. My words are being said with a clear soul and with a composed mind. The haraya and the proof that this is so, Elihu said, who hakol is the sound of my words. With this sound, with my voice, I'm bringing out and articulating my words. Because a person who doesn't have the ability to control and direct his words in a rational, logical way, in a controlled way, he is also not able to control the sound of the words. And when you, Eov, see that I am directing and controlling the sound of my words, I'm speaking in a controlled and composed way. You can learn from this that I am speaking in a, in a clear and composed, uh, with a clear and composed uh, mind. And because of this, Elihu said, listen to the sound of my words. So now we must pause to understand fully this yesod, this fundamental principle that the Zerah Shimshon has just shared with us, which is that 
if a person were to say, listen to my words, then in some situations, it would not be reasonable for the listener to pay attention to those words. As the Zer Shimshon explained, if the words were said out of great emotion of, of, of hatred or of love or of distress or of anger or of other or coming out of other powerful emotional sources, then the even though the speaker says, listen to my words, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it wouldn't be appropriate to act as if the speaker is expressing himself in a composed and rational and logical way. Rather, the person is speaking out of deep uh, emotion that could be completely um, uh, mean that they're speaking out of place and out of turn. However, when someone says, listen to the coal, listen to the sound of my words, and the listener hears the person speaking calmly and clearly, and in a rational, logical way, without the being swayed by the emotion that they might be feeling, then the Zerashimshon says it does make sense to pay attention to the words, and that is exactly what Elihu meant when he said to Eov, "Listen to the sound of my words, and you'll see that I'm calm, although I have great emotion inside." As I said before, as Elihu had previously stated, nonetheless. Listen to the sound of my, of my words and you'll see I'm calm now, I'm composed, and it makes sense for you to pay attention carefully to the words that I'm saying. The Hachi Nami continuing at the bottom of the column, as the Zer Shimshon now uh, applies this Yeso, this principle to the other cases that, uh, that he brought in the beginning. The Hachi Nami Bameshe Dibru Yisrael Neged HaKadosh Baruch Hu Amiraglim, and so too, Regarding the actual words that B'nai Yisrael spoke at the episode of the spies, Ein Ashima, we they should not necessarily be found guilty and blamed for those words. Top of the next column, Lefisha, Hoyu Turudim Umispachadim, because they were very distressed and fearful. Bamesha Amru Lahem Amaraglim, because of what the spies said to them. Rock min hakol shehotziu divrehem. However, from the sound of the, of the words that they brought out, hayanoda, it became known, ki vidas miyusheves hayumidabrim, that they were speaking with a composed mind, uvachet, and therefore it was sinful, vafesha, and it was rebellious. Umishum hachi, and because of this, kisheshama Hashem. As cold divrechem, therefore the pasuk says, when Hashem heard the sound of your voices, that it was a composed and calm sound. Dafka specifically, vayiktsof Hashem became angry, vayishov valemor, and he swore, saying, "Im yira ish, if any of these people will be allowed to go into Eretz Yisrael." So, what's the this this the uh, idea as it applies to the Psukim uh, about the Chet Hamaraglim, which is, which is, of course, from our uh, Parsha. The idea is that if B'nai Yisrael had been terror-stricken and they had been uh, uh, speaking only out of, uh, out of emotion, then they could have been forgiven. Then their punishment, the Zer Shimshon suggests, might not have been nearly as severe because anyone can be overcome by their emotions. But Moshe said, Hashem heard the kol divrechem. Hashem heard the sound of your voices. And he realized that the sound wasn't out of, uh, out of terror. The sound wasn't out of deep, deep, profound distress and fear. Your voices sounded calm. Your voices sounded thoughtful. The sound of your voices. And therefore, Hashem said, I see that you, that the people who are talking this way, actually feel this way and not just based on their fear and not just based on their emotional but rather they actually are thinking in this sinful and rebellious way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu would not God forbid not be able to take them in to Eretz Kanaan. And with this idea that the Zer Shimshon has developed he says we can answer very well another question Al Pasuk Heitivu Kal Asher Di Beiru on the Pasuk about uh, what Hashem says when B'nai Yisrael, this is now going to Parshas Va'eschanon, 
when B'nai Yisrael said uh, to Moshe, please, you speak to uh, you, you speak to us, have Hashem speak to you, and you relay the words to us, as opposed to us listening, continuing to listen to what Hashem is saying. Um, Hashem said, hey, it is good everything that the people said. So the Zer Shimshon says, if the truth is that they spoke to Moshe, to, to, and asked him if they could hear everything from him, as opposed to continuing to listen to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because of fear, because they knew they were, they felt they were going to die. As it appears uh, from the simple reading of the Pasuk, where it says, Im yosfi manachnu, if we continue to hear Hashem's voice, vamasnu, then we will die. Im kein dibru machmas yira. If so, they were speaking out of fear, v'tirda, in great distress, v'ein mamosh b'divrehem, and therefore their words should not be considered substantive. V'eich im kein shivcham hakosuv. So how could the Pasuk praise them? where it says, hey, tivu v'chuli, that Hashem said about the words of B'nai Yisrael, these are good words that B'nai Yisrael spoke. How, how could the words of people who were speaking out of fear and distress uh, be taken and referred to by Hashem as, as good words? Umikolshkein, and how much more so? More so, shelefio emes, because in truth, lo yofe osu, it was not good what B'nai Yisrael did when they said, we no longer feel able or want to hear Hashem's voice. She'ilu ha'yishom because we have a tradition from Chazal that if B'nai Yisrael had continued listening at Har Sinai to the words of Hashem, ha'yayetzer hara ne'akar mehem legamre, then the yetzer hara, the inclination to sin and to transgress would have been completely uprooted from them. So the Zerah Shimshon says, we have a real problem with the uh, statement of Hashem saying that when B'nai Yisrael said to Moshe, we, we prefer to listen to you and let Hashem speak to you from now on and you repeat to us, you conveyed us what Hashem said, as opposed to standing at Har Sinai and, and continuing to listen to the words of Hashem, no matter how frightening and awesome that experience might have been, how could Hashem say that was a good thing, that those were good words? A, those were words spoken out of emotion, and the Zer Shimshon's whole yesod is that we should not pay attention to the words that people speak when they're speaking and out of being overwhelmed by a, by a powerful emotion. And number two, those words, in fact, seem to go against what we would think was the Ratzon of Hashem, because had B'nai Yisrael listened completely to the full, all of, this, all of the words that Hashem was saying, then this would have uprooted the Yetzir Hara from amongst B'nai Yisrael completely. And what a tremendous uh, lichora! apparently, what an incredible thing that would accomplishment that would have been. So why was it good for B'nai Yisrael to refrain, to prevent themselves from experiencing that? Continuing in the next paragraph, it's Orach Lomar, and we need to say, Sheha Emes Hu, the truth is, She Yisrael Nispachadu Mibnei Hamiso. It is true that B'nai Yisrael was afraid of dying at Har Sinai. They felt they, they were sincere when they said, if we continue to listen and hear the words of Hashem directly, we will die. It's not something that an experience we can survive. Aval milvad hapachad, but besides for the fear, od hayu choshvim bedatam, they were also thinking in their mind clearly, logically. That if the Yetzir Hara would in fact be removed from them by because of their listening to all of the words of Hashem at Har Sinai, lo Odes then they would no longer have any reward and punishment. It would no longer be relevant. It would no longer uh, be part of their experiences to have reward and punishment for their actions because they would no longer have a Yetzir Hara. And they thought that it would be better for them that there should be a continuing, a continuance of the of the Yetzirah. And because they would have to overcome the Yetzirah, 
then they would be able to have schar to be rewarded for their actions when they overcome the Yetzar and they do the mitzvahs and the Ratzon Hashem. Shehoyu betuchim al hayira, because they took, because they were certain based on their fear that they felt, Shehoyu Solohem, that they had also show at that moment, Bilvovam in their hearts, Shehoyu Yetzar Hara lo yachatiim that the Yetzir Hara would not be able to cause them to sin. They felt, so, they felt the presence of Hashem so profoundly that they trusted in the fact that even with a Yetzir Hara, they would be able to continue serving Hashem and they would not give in to the persuasions of the Yetzir Hara. Umishum hachi, and because of this, al Svara Zu, on, based on this reasoning, this logic, not the emotion of fear, but rather this reasoned position, Mishabeach Luhukra, the Pasuk uh, praises Bnei Yisrael, Shamati es kol divrei ha'am hazeh, that Hashem says, I have heard the sound of the words of the people, v'chuli, umishum hachi, and because of this ksiv, it's written kol divrei, the sound of the words, meaning that Hashem said, I don't just pay attention, I don't just focus on their words, I'm listening to the sound of their words. And when they talk about uh, wanting to um, stop hearing me speak directly to them, when B'nai Yisrael says that, it's not just out of fear, it's not just out of emotion. There's also a logical component and a reasoned position that they're taking that they would rather continue having the Yetzir Hara as opposed to having it be completely uprooted in order to, to receive schar, in order to deserve to receive reward from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. V'raya alzeh, and there is a proof to this, dechsiv acharav, because it's written after uh, Hashem, after the Pusik says that Hashem heard the sound of their words, it's written mi yitain. Hashem says, Moshe relates that Hashem said, who could give it v'hoyo levavam, that their hearts would always feel this way, l'yira osi, to fear me. This means that Hashem realized that they felt a fear of Hashem, but in a positive way, it motivated them to feel that they could overcome the Yetzir Hara. And they trusted in that fear, that Yiras Hashem, to, to overcome the Yetzir Hara. And Hashem said, Halavai, they should always feel that way that their year as Hashem will prevent them from sinning. Laman yitev lohem, in order that it will be good for them, v'chulei, etc. What does that mean, in order that it will be good for them? K'day she yisrabe sechorom, because their merit, their reward will be increased im yi lohem yetzer hara. If they have a yetzer hara, they won't be rewarded in, in, in a similar way if they don't have a yetzer hara, of course. But if they do have a yetzer hara, then they will receive tremendous char for overcoming the Yetzirah and doing the Ratzam Hashem, Ki Lefum Tzara Agra, because we know according to the uh, famous uh, statement in Pirkei Avos, according to the pain, according to the difficulty of the challenge, Agra is the reward. So for B'nai Yisrael, having in the deep understanding to be able to say to Moshe Rabbeinu, it's true that we're terrified of listening to the words of Hashem, but we also know that if we continue doing so until Hashem's words are completed, we'll, we'll, the Yetzirah will be removed from us. And that might be a, an incredible thing, but it will mean that we don't, won't receive the schar from Hashem that we're working so hard for that only comes from overcoming the challenge of a Yetzirah. Yashukov to everyone for participating tonight, and we look forward, God willing, to learning Zerashim Shon again next week.